So it's late on a Sunday night, uh, hence the darkness. Um, this is approaching from the northeast, and I'm going to head as if I'm cycling towards Canterbury. So we have a instruction here. Quite narrow, but this was apparently intentional. And now it's a prohibited cycle path uh, with a drop curb, uh, which is absolutely no good if I want to go that way to Canterbury. Go across the road, obviously, give way, give way. So I want to go to Canterbury, follow the instructions. Again, narrow pavement, apparently planned. Um, this is a very high fence. Sight lines around the corner are terrible. It's quite a nice roundabout though. So I guess that's good. Um, so this is the new Bullockstone Road going off to the northwest. Again, cycle's prohibited, so we cross, give way, ignore the debris, give way, ignore more debris, I'm gonna go around that. But basically we go along there, and if you're going down to Bullockstone, there's a new shared path, which is, again, pretty narrow, but it's actually a shared path. Um, but if we carry back on this way, we've got another crossing here, but that cycle's prohibited. So I guess if you follow the instruction to leave the carriageway, you end up along here trying to turn out of this road. So instead of simply carrying on around the roundabout, you now have to give way to the right on a not very pleasant corner. Uh, whereas before you could have just carried straight on. If you do end up ignoring, if you do end up ignoring or not noticing the cycling prohibited sign and end up on this footpath, it's really great because when you get to the end, there's no drop curb. So again, there's loads of low trees here. Not great. If you're a cyclist, I mean, arguably you shouldn't be here. That'll be the argument given, which is, you know, technically correct, the best kind of correct. Uh, but you just end up in a bus stop on a blind curve with terrible visibility. Um, if you have, just now I'm coming from the south, from Canterbury, follow the instructions to leave the carriageway, narrow shared path, but a shared path nonetheless. can see. Then we've got uh, the same footpath as before, not a cycle path, so we ignore that. Then we've got the shared footpath all the way down to the northern roundabout, which is great, like that is a genuine improvement, but as a cyclist we've got a very sharp right hand here, so it's not actually signposted. Uh, we cross over along this little path, but again I'm not going to do that because of the debris. If you don't notice as a cyclist, you can exit the footpath here, 
and then again give way to the right which I guess is fine but this is the one that really scares me so assuming that you've crossed over there effectively you come along here across this traffic island back onto the shared path you follow this narrow uh, footpath but if you pretend that you're a car coming around this roundabout here I cannot see there is no sight line at all because of this tall fence and I'm as far over as you would ever normally be in a car uh, so then you would get right up here and it's only as you're here really right at the exit can you tell whether there's a cyclist rejoining a carriageway and this is the part that's really not good enough so the marking really marks this as a carriage a cycling route there's a pretty terrible drop curve here these look to be unfinished uh, cycling prohibited so basically you just get dumped straight back on the main road with cars coming accelerating away from the roundabout and only being able to see you at the very last minute and the best part is if you're even if you're a cyclist and you stop here which you shouldn't have to do you literally cannot see cars part of the way around the roundabout which is completely unacceptable uh, not great just for the sake of argument pacing out from this traffic island to the markings two three four six seven eight ten eleven twelve fourteen so thirteen was where the traffic island ends one two three five six seven nine ten twelve thirty 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 to the cycle, two, three, four, five, six. So it's about twice as far, uh, which actually is pretty much in line with the plans. Um, it looked like less when I was driving past. Um, so yeah, as a cyclist, I'm impressed. Uh, just another quick follow up. So the width of this isn't too bad, but again, if we look at the instruction to leave the carriageway, uh, it's actually not a great width, and again, it's coming onto a very narrow path. As an experienced cyclist, I would ignore this, and as someone who's also a regular driver, I would much prefer a cyclist to ignore it, because effectively you get dumped off here. Uh, you have to give way in a really awkward place, Whereas you could just cycle along, give way to the roundabout as normal, where actually visibility is pretty good, and then carry on. Cycling along the road, and just take the exit off to Canterbury, as you would. You basically give way once, as per usual, um, and coming from the south, you come off the carriageway, you have to give way at a number of crossings all the way around and then it spits you out on the road in a place of terrible visibility. Um, I, when cycling around here, we'll just ignore the cycle markings because it's extremely dangerous to follow them, um, especially if going Canterbury bound. Um, but I am especially looking forward to being yelled at by car drivers when I'm on my bike for not using the cycle path.